we are in chapter 7 and there is another promise of Shri Krishna to Arjun in verse 2 where he says Jnanam te hamsa vidyanam idam vakshyam yasheshataha yad gyatva neha bhuyonyata gyatavya mavashishyate He says I shall, Krishna says I shall tell you completely the whole knowledge combined with the experience of it. That means the practical side of it. The, the very experience of what God is saying and not just the theory. And he says having known that there will remain nothing else in this world for you to know. That's a big promise. But there is a condition. <laughs> Conditions always apply. And there, that is already mentioned in the first verse of 7th chapter. Where Bhagavan says, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Sakta Manaf Partha Yogam Yunjan Madashrayaha Asam Shayam Samagrammam Yathagyasyasi he says, Maya Sakta Mana, you have to fix your mind only on me. And your thirst for that highest knowledge has to be so strong that you hold on to it um, with concentration. And you practice Yoga Yunjan. You practice the yoga of meditating, of concentrating, of focusing, let's say. Focusing on me only. Me meaning the highest truth and taking refuge in me that means not still hankering for the world thinking mistakenly in your delusion that yes there is something of ultimate value out there in the world first you have to give up that thought only then can you take refuge in me when do we take refuge when we find that there is nothing of value in this land for me and i am only going to destroy myself in afghanistan that's when you try to escape from the borders and uh, escape from the borders of Syria or Afghanistan when when you absolutely realize that this place will lead to my patan, my destruction, my downfall I cannot reach my highest here okay, in, in the case of actual refugees they are looking for bare physical survival and prosperity but for the spiritual seeker the sansar has to be escaped from in order to take refuge in me that's why he uses the word madashrayaha in the first verse take refuge in me okay so having um, given these two conditions as the basis for the highest truth and uh, seventh chapter onwards uh, as i mentioned the bhagavad gita is going to talk about that tat that essence who is krishna <laughs> rather than who is krishna where is krishna and uh, how can I reach that Krishna Tattva? That is 7th chapter onwards. So up to 6 what was going on? So up to 6 Krishna was explaining to Arjun and to all us uh, human beings that we should know our, our own nature first. When in the Mahavakya it is said Tattvam Asi. Tvam, you are that. So who is that you? So we saw that we are not that body, mind, intellect complex but something beyond that. A constant factor, um, a kutas uh, uh, an unchanging eternal something in finite which is powering us. We saw all that about us, ourselves. Seventh onwards, next few chapters, Krishna will talk about, okay, so what is that tat of which you are a part, tattvamasi. And therefore, the trend of, uh, trend meaning the, the, the direction, so let's say direction, uh, of seventh uh, of Gita from seventh chapter changes a little bit and moves towards more towards Krishna towards that highest consciousness, and what happens to us uh, when we when we are told oh Bhagwan is going to talk about himself, and then we realize oh maybe he is going to describe himself, and I want to know the description why, because we are used to only descriptions which we can grasp with our minds which we can uh, uh, sort of um, engage with with our sight mandir mein jate hai, murti dikhti hai. Uh, we want to engage our senses our sight sound smell and then we say ha ho sakta hai wo humko uh, aisa description denge but this is like saying that your small a finite uh, little mind how can it grasp the infinite how can the ephemeral grasp that ethereal? 
how can something which is so impermanent grasp that which is permanent something that is which is so um, uh, transitory how can it uh, grasp that which is eternal and infinite it doesn't make sense no so so the first thing to understand is it's not the mind not the senses not even the intellect which is going to grasp that um, that super consciousness that expectation has to be dropped and that is why we fail in understanding the highest truth because we are looking for a figure for a murti for a form naam roop dikhaiye apne um, so so that happens in bhagavat for the for the lower intellect bhag it was written down so that the people of lower intellect who were not capable of engaging in the sukshma subtle logic uh, of the scriptures of the vedas they had these vast descriptions of shiva and ram and the and the ras leela of krishna etc that is so that they could grasp at least the outer form but if we are on the gyan path if then it's better to understand that uh, saying that i'm going to grasp that highest truth with my mind with my petty little mind which in any case is sullied completely in the hankerings of the world that's not possible it's like saying yes i have a kite i have a kite and i'm going to fly it high and then you say it's going to touch the moon is your kite going to touch the moon no so that's um, an unreasonable expectation um but then how is it that we are going to understand it's only through an intuition and therefore for that intuition we need to actually silence the mind silence the mind and the intellect in the very first place and therefore we saw in the previous chapter chapter 6 the very first attempt that krishna made with arjun is to say arjun please get into dhyan into meditation into silence re- retreat retreat from the world into yourself only then can i even tell you about the highest truth which is in this chapter that's why krishna very methodically has first given the dhyan yoga in sixth chapter now what happens in silence first of all where is that silence experienced we just said yesterday the silence is experienced um if you are a music musician you will realize that the beauty of music i have heard this description about music before the beauty of music is actually not in the notes but in the silence between two notes think about it this was one of the most beautiful descriptions of music that i ever heard that the true beauty of music lies in the silence between two notes so also um we our true identity when we have to realize who are we what is my true nature it can only be fathomed between two thoughts there are two thoughts and there is a silence in between that is when the when um we i can't say mind and thought mind and thought is suspended we suddenly ascend ascend climb up into that silence for a few seconds even for a fraction if it is for longer much better we ascend into that true nature which is our tatva which is our essence which is our true swabhava uh, no not swabhava swarupa it is our true swarupa and we ascend into it and what is that that is just consciousness and silence anand and there is complete anand in it how do you know there is anand that's because when we have suspended the very um thought and mind in deep sleep that's when time and space doesn't exist and that's when we experience the the most um peaceful kind of anand joy that's why when people are traumatized when people are in great trauma the first thing the doctor does is give them a shot of morphine so that they can sleep sleep it off because that is the only panacea silence uh is the only panacea for the trauma and the noise of the outer world that is what we are all seeking actually the silence that anand which is our own true nature we are all basically in search of our own true nature and we think we are mistaken um that when we believe that it is out there in the world somewhere we will get that permanent happiness and that anand which is supposed to be permanent it is your own true nature so it can't leave you 
<laughs> it is permanent but it eludes us because we have dipped into small little ponds of uh, happiness small little splashes of happiness thinking maybe this is it this vyakti this relationship this vastu um, uh, this event uh, and and some kind of uh, this excitement this elation will last forever and it doesn't so we come back with a thud back to the earth and and in search of that anand again that silence that anand is who you are and you can experience it only between your thoughts or in deep sleep or when we are dead or in samadhi or in dhyan so right now we we don't have the choice to die right <laughs> so why don't we just go into dhyan suspend the very mind and intellect which is um, hanging around in the world leading to nowhere it's a wild goose chase and then arjun naturally the question in arjun's mind is um, krishna if the vedantic knowledge that you are going to talk about and which you have expounded in chapter 2 onwards if that vedantic knowledge is so complete so whole so fulfilling then why is it that there are so few masters such few masters realized people in the world why why can't more people realize that truth so in now bhagwan answers chapter 7 verse 3 मनुष्याणाम सहस्रेशु कश्चिद्यत्तति सिद्धये यततां अपि सिद्धानां कश्चिन्मां वेत्ति तत्वतः Among thousands and thousands of men there are people very very few who even strive for that perfection who even want to know what is that highest truth so that perfection they're not looking for and even among those who are looking for perfection and those who strive for that success one maybe just one out of them per chance knows my true essence says krishna my true essence which means what rare are the people very rare very rare are the people who study the scriptures look around you and you will know that in your own locality or your district there may be you know like you see the population of the people one of my swamis had done that once <laughs> when we were studying about 10 years ago he said okay you live in kharghar what is the population of kharghar at that time it was 4 lakhs now it is 8 8 to 10 lakhs so he said among 4 lakhs in this room right now how many of you are there so we had enrolled like 23 of us had enrolled for that class so he said why are there only 23 of you here why have have you ever inquired even if two had uh, enrolled for the course the course would have uh, continued and it would have gone on you know why because krishna has said very clearly in this uh, verse that very few very rare are the people who study the scriptures and rarer even rarer are those people who have the stamina or the tap the stamina is the tap tapasya jisko kehte hain na the tap to stick on to it which means that even when they do this course or that course to continue their reading of it or studying of it or dhyan or naam or jap or because there are so many texts and you must be wondering there are so many texts um in um, sanatan dharma so which one to study which one has the truth but truth is only one each one of them is expounding the same truth the truth is that um, that this jagat is mithya and there is only one brahma satya brahma satyam jagat mithya and tatvam asi only one truth then volumes and volumes and volumes written on it but very few people go into it and stick to it so manushya naam sahasreshu there are thousands of people among thousands of them uh, why are we here in the first place if we are not going to study the scriptures oh because many of us who are not going to study the scriptures are still on this planet taking birth because of the momentum of past vasna pa- vasna is past sanskar all the karma that we have done so all the karma has to be exhausted in any case we are here with that momentum so since we are here in any case let us not believe that we are here to um, enjoy the pleasures of the earth and uh, 
and remain here for the pleasures. That is the small mistake. Otherwise, uh, even Vivek Chunamani had said that, yes, it's very, very rare even to get a human birth. And it's very rare even for a manushya, once you become a manushya, to have purushatva. Purushatva is that ability to say, I will do tapasya, I will stay up for hours and hours together studying or in dhyan or listening. The, the, the number of hours put in that we put in into our um, worldly pursuits, you know, the number of hours we've put into clearing our exams, into getting our children married, the kind of effort and tapas that goes into it. Yes, but we can't call that tapas because the very definition of tapasya is uh, an endeavor for the higher purpose. So getting my daughter married off or getting a higher degree in Harvard University or getting a new job and becoming the CEO and bringing my company up uh, uh, with, um, uh, with a lot of success in the company, uh, bringing more profits to the company. Yes, it's hard work. It will not be called tap. Never mind. So, rarer are the people who have this Purushatva to practice tap for higher purpose. Rarer are the people even among those who have a quality of Satvikta. Satvikta meaning the love for the scriptures, for literature, for dhyan, for masters who seek out in their vicinity, in their neighborhood or online nowadays to seek out the masters and say, I want to hear the truth. Those who seek out the company of the realized people and revel in that company of literature and scriptures and reading and discussions and satsang. Satsang meaning? Adhyatmic discussions. They revel in it. That is sattvic quality. Rare. Rarer are the, those who listen. Shruti. Who have, who listen to the scriptures. Shruti. And rarer are, even rarer are those who having, having heard the Shruti, that is the scriptures gain vivek vivek meaning the distinction between sat and asat very rare so we may hear it we may hear it as a kind of a scholarly treatise and uh, the speaker and the listener are both engaging in a kind of a literary reading exposition and it doesn't go deeper than that so no vivek sinks in unless they do it continuously and mumukshatva that desire for moksha for liberation is even rarer. We know this from Vivek Chudamani, how rare it is. So, that's why Bhagwan says, Yatatam api siddhanam, those who strive, kaschen maam veti tattvataha, only the one odd one who really comes to know my essence. That's why we see that on your fingertips you can count the number of, the number of uh, siddha saints that we know of. You know, so so we may talk about in our own um, century. We may talk about Raman Maharshi or the previous century and Vivekanandji and Chinmayaji, um, and maybe uh, earlier ones. We may talk about Buddha, Krishna, and Muhammad. But they're all, uh, you know, so rare, so few. It's not a common occurrence because even those who want. To listen to the scriptures and to gain the highest, uh, the word used here is kaschit. They are not ready to turn away from the sansar and turn completely towards the, the higher knowledge or the contemplation of it. We can't hear all through the day, but the contemplation of it. And that is the price we have to pay. The price to be paid is to keep dropping all the attractions and engagements and uh, pursuits and even duties, yeah, why not? After a certain age, you pass on your duties. Okay, now it's your business. I'm not here to uh, rear up a, another set of families. All those things have to be given up at a certain time because you find your own priority. That's the price people are not ready to pay. Therefore, they are very rare, those who go up the ladder of uh, becoming Siddha. Uh, so, hardly 1% of the population would may become a jnani, 1% of this whole plan, jnani, the real jnani like Raman Mahashi, Ramakrishna, you just, and if you have been in contact with such people, wow, you feel so dhanya, there is a certain grace, and then you look for, um, you look for Swamiji's or those even who are expounding the truth, so what is the kind of company you are seeking, that also uh, depends on what kind of sadhak you are, so 10% of the people become sadhak, 
if one person just become jnani 10% may become sadhak sadhak means i know that there is a truth and it can be known with that shraddha with that belief uh, the sadhak move ahead and there are those 10% who are also ahankari uh, in this population and they say what is there to be known i'm fine the way i am and i know this mambo jumbo of superstition because they have been exposed too much i think to uh, superstitious practices and therefore they say i know what is to be known i really don't uh, want to read the scripture so ahankari 10% and then there are the 10% who are jigyasu they say that i know that i don't know something there is some truth i don't know about it and i am quite clear that i'm totally ignorant about it they accept their ignorance so they are at least they are seeking their jigyasu and what about the 69% that 70% which is left over they don't even know that they are unaware of the highest truth so it's like saying they don't know that they don't know so how will you seek something that you don't know about if i don't know that there is this most mystical beautiful mountain called machu picchu in uh, uh, in south america how will i seek it out how will i look for it how will i do research and find out why it is so mystical what is the magic behind it what is the adhyatma i will not find out anything about machu picchu in south africa south america so they don't know that they don't know so they just go on with life and therefore chinmay ji says that the very first word used in this verse is manushya naam manushya manushya is not one who is just got an anatomy of a manushya anatomy of a manushya is fine we have your our senses and we have our man we have our buddhi even animals have it and uh, the chemical composition of the body is the same it's phosphorus and and nitrogen and carbon and water and uh, same composition chemically so animals have the same so manushya doesn't mean you have the anatomy of a human doesn't make you a human being that's what chinmay ji says because the same instincts and impulses by which the animals eat and drink and mate and sleep is the same instinct with many of the manushyas do the same now so he says the what makes a manushya a manushya is the ability and the desire to enquire reaching that highest truth is a secondary uh, step altogether but to enquire ki main hu kaun ye what is the cause of all this what is the whole purpose what is this game all about because at the end of it i don't see much purpose and meaning in this Uh, brahman the srishti that enquiry only a human being is capable of yatatam is another word used here it means only humans can uh, acquire perfection siddhi by putting exclusive exclusive attention on this enquiry now our attention is scattered on this uh, and that i have to manage my uh, mutual funds and my bank account and it's depleting and things are going back to worse and then there's the health issues of family members and then the weddings in the family and the mind is uh, completely distracted out in the world hamare kitne projects hain duniya mein professional projects personal mini projects ye karna hai wo karna hai so when exclusive attention is given to enquiring that i have to find out that highest truth wo enquiry ko wo kehte hain yatatam yatatam mane um effort simple words mein effort but उसी एफर्ट को असल माने में हायर एफर्ट कहेंगे जैसे कि तपस्या को भी हायर सर्च को ही हायर सर्च हायर एफर्ट को ही तपस्या कहेंगे ना दिस परफेक्शन दैट आई वांट टू रीच कैन आई रीच दैट परफेक्शन दैट सिद्धि बाय डोंट डोंट वी नो दैट वी ऑल हैव द ट्रिमेंडस कैपेसिटी टू अटेन परफेक्शन इन आर स्पेसिफिक फील्ड ऑफ वर्क whether we are um, uh, teachers or scientists uh, or we are um, writers and actors and artists we have this urge to or cricketers and sportsmen uh, and athletes we have this urge to gain that perfection which means the capacity for perfection is already there unless we are completely tamasic that that quality is also there in some people where there is no effort there is no desire to make the effort and there is complete indolence and idleness theek hai wo tamasik gun mein aata hai 
लेकिन फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ अस वी आर केपेबल ऑफ मेकिंग दैट हाईएस्ट एफर्ट एंड गिविंग एक्सक्लूसिव अटेंशन सो इफ आई वांट टू गेन माय पीएचडी इन एजुकेशन फ्रॉम आईवी लीग स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी इन अमेरिका द नेक्स्ट थ्री इयर्स आई एम गोइंग टू गिव एक्सक्लूसिव अटेंशन एंड एफर्ट टू इट बिकॉज दैट्स माई प्रोजेक्ट सपोज जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल इन द सेम वे आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गेट माई पी एच डी और माई प्रमोशन बाई प्लीजिंग माई बॉस I am not going to get my siddhi of spiritual knowledge by pleasing the gods with gifts and uh, praise. Yes, it's important to praise what you believe is your inspiration. If it, if the Lord is your inspiration, that is, that is coming up in bhakti yoga. Don't worry. But the fact is, even bhakti yoga, we can be led astray by thinking that we will gain that siddhi, that perfection, that highest. by pleasing the gods and offering gifts so try doing that with your boss and try and get your promotions <laughs> it won't go too far <laughs> uh, so we all have to pay a very high price for any siddhi worldly siddhi or adhyatmik siddhi perfection in the world or in the adhyatmik spiritual uh, progress very high price to pay and we are ready to pay it in the worldly life in sansar yes so we may just have to shift our attention where we want to Uh, attain our highest now in the world where we put in all our efforts right through our lives and then the life just depletes it just seems to um, you know sort of um, what is it called this through the fingers this through the fingers it, it just slides away it just the the sands of time are just sliding away at the end of it what okay so i have achieved something and i have uh, maybe somebody not i <laughs> has uh, uh, built a lot of hospitals and uh, i have discovered a new continent so i am christopher columbus wow what achievements what great achievements and, uh, and then i have um, conquered the world like alexander this that and the other right now what's happening in some other life um, the statues which will be built for my Uh, or in my honor the statues will stand for some centuries and like ozimen dais they will lie in the sands of time and their visage will will still hold that power on the face but they will be um, ground to to dust but something worse can happen it's possible that the same christopher columbus who had his statue built in so many places has um, uh, taken birth in some other form and now that new form of the human is a revolutionary who believes that christopher columbus was actually an exploiter and he was a racist and he actually destroyed the the native population of the red indians and therefore his statue should be pulled down <laughs> i'm talking about recent history in america where the statues of all these greats were actually pulled down and dumped into the ocean by whom many of them may be the reincarnations of the same people who have come again as revolutionaries so the worldly achievements actually have no meaning whatever you have built up today next life you may come back and you may tear it to shreds yourself because your belief may change and you may reincarnate that's how um ironical life is and that's how uh, our vanity and our desire and our pride Uh, doesn't lead us too far so bhagwan says are you ready to pay that price yatatam api siddhanam that great that that striving that you need to do to find my essence and if you do that that's a rare quality in any human being because very rare are the people who right now we are listening to a whole lot of people and sorry <laughs> right now we are listening to yes we are listening to a lot of mahatmas we are listening to um the scriptures through them but uh, and listening to the great knowledge but remember behind us right behind us there are thou there is a big line big line of thousands and thousands of people who have not even heard of the scriptures or the highest knowledge or what is to be attained by it that simply means that what you value you will hold on to and therefore the example i gave before was that of the queen of england who thinks that uh, a stolen diamond from uh, an erstwhile colony and studded in her crown is one of her prized possessions which she takes great pride in and, and there is great vanity and arrogance attached to it that's where 
if that is where her attention is, that's what she will gain. Stolen diamonds from another colony, okay. So if that is what we want and you keep it, you can jolly well keep it. It's not going to destroy Sanatan Dharma. It's not going to destroy our spiritual happiness. <laughs> and therefore, uh, so in there was an anecdote where Chinmaya Ji was um, in one of the meetings. You know, people like to give offerings. Naturally, if they are very grateful for the high knowledge, they um, bring offerings. So, Chinmaya Ji, of course, as graciously, you have to accept them. And so, somebody long ago brought a very rare coral, coral, very rare one, very precious. And um, as the line of devotees, uh, they paid their respects and they kept, they kept moving on, Chinmaya Ji just took that coral and passed it on to another devotee as a prasad. So, there it went, right under the nose of that, uh, that person who had donated this most precious coral. It could have been diamond, it could have been gold, doesn't matter. Chinmaya Ji offered it at, as prasad to someone else. How does it matter? It makes no difference. So, so uh, uh, chapter 7, we are waiting to hear from Bhagwan what is his true nature. And since we know that there is no description, why? Because he does not have form. We just say he, it's just it, it does not have form. And um, it cannot be cut, it cannot be sliced, it cannot be. How, how are you going to experience if your senses are not going to experience it. And we have seen already, Nainam chindanti shastrani, Nainam dahati pavakaha, you cannot um, cleave it with your weapons, you cannot burn it, Na chayanam kleda yantyapaha, Na shoshayati marutaha, cannot burn it, cannot dry it. How will you ever grasp the entity? So, this chapter is all about, it's a very allegorical and a very mystical chapter with lots of allegory, which means a lots of description of the uh, emblems, pratik, indications, direction, only pointers will be there. Ki, are ye hai, to zarur bhagwan honge. If there is smoke, there must be fire. This kind of direction and pointers will be there. That's why it's very allegorical to read this word, this chapter. And therefore, bhagwan explains, what is your, we are in verse 4. Verse 4, he says, I am going to explain my nature. Okay. Seventh chapter, verse 4. Bhumi rapo nalo vayuhu khammano buddhi revacha ahankara iti yamme bhe.